<laughs> You're on your own. Oh no! Hi! The countdown went wrong. Sorry if you were on YouTube. I don't know what happened there. I apologise if that was my fault. Hello, everybody on YouTube. Hello, everybody on Instagram. It's Wednesday. Did you miss us last week? We weren't here last week. I had a couple of your messages. Are we back? We're back! We are here. If you didn't watch our live from the tower, go back and watch our live from the tower. It's only on Instagram. So there we go. Okay. So we are here. I am going to try and get the ladies up because... We have a very interesting gentleman, if you want to call him a gentleman, to discuss this evening for our git. Yes. Um, right. OK. It says you ladies are coming. Are you coming? Oh, there's one. And, 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 and. There's the other one. Joe. Yay. The full okay. set. We do come as a set now. Yes, mm. correct. The threesome. Mm. So it begins. It's before it begins. <laughs> and so before we, without any further ado, without, hello, Julian. Uh, let's do it. Let, let's hand over to Katrina to give oh, us God, the don't disclaimer. Fall, don't fall name me. I'm before, not in trouble yet. I've not yes. even said nothing. Um, right. Before it becomes irrelevant. Oh, the disclaimer. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, welcome, friends, to History After Dark. It's just gone quarter past eight. BST, GMT. Um, usually, it, if it was winter, it'd be dark, but it's not. That's why we called it this, History After Dark. It's now still daylight, but don't worry for the topics may still um, wander on the inappropriate side. We are three human beings who have our own social media platforms. We tend to um, keep it PG-13 on our social media platforms, and we wanted a space that was not... I know what you've just seen, and yes, it's that's very sad, isn't it? Oh... <sighs> We'll do that in a sec. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. We, we will, we will, um, we wanted to set up, I was going to call this a safe space, but that's absolutely not what this is. Don't think it is. We want to set up a space where we could be the horrific navvies that we are um, and <laughs> swear and be smutty and do innuendo. So with that being said, if you are in an open plan office with a judgmental boss, put a headphone in. This is a way to get disciplinary. If you listen to us at full volume, um, if you're looking to be made redundant, then go for it. Um, alternatively, if you have a, a small human, this we call this small human, Timmy. Timmy's a problem. Timmy's a dobber. Timmy is the sort of child that hears one thing one time. Timmy is a problem. We have the mugs. We have the merch. Um, Timmy hears one thing one time. He doesn't say anything at the time when he hears it, but he commits it to memory in his creepy little brain vault. Um, he takes it into his creepy little brain vault and he takes it to school with him. And then he asks his teacher, who doesn't know what the thing means, and then she foolishly, because she doesn't listen to this, Googles it. Because what's the one rule, friend? Don't Google it. If you don't know what it means, it's not for you. Don't Google it. But the teacher doesn't know this because she does not listen to had fool. So she thus... Uh, she thus um, will Google it and then call you and then it becomes your problem once again. So if you don't want that to happen, put a headphone in. Alternatively, listen to us on the playback, either on the Instagram or the YouTubes. I say listen to us on the playback. It's always worth listening to us live because there could be a very, well, there's a very, very real possibility that at some point we will <laughs> once again say something that is so unspeakably depraved that we have to yeet the footage into the sun because we don't um, want to do time. So uh, always best to watch us live. <laughs> True. Because you never know what we might say. Um, don't know. Google it. And this is not a drinking game. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> quite a good night. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, and then the rest. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yes, we are on to Git N already, um, mm. which is, is quite exciting. It's going to be a good one this week. Um, so, Richard we Neville. Do, we, oh, do yes. have all that. we do have yes. to say um, on do. the YouTube we have hit 1,000 subscribers. We've gone over 1,000 subscribers. So Thank you. Oh, huzzah, thank you huzzah. Um, and because you are all so fabulous, we also have hit the – we've more than hit. Yeah. <laughs> more than hit the required watch hours for monetization. And now why does that matter? For those of you who, who do YouTube, you understand that when you are monetized, that means that YouTube can make money off of you. So what that means <laughs> – is that YouTube shares your content more, <laughs> and yeah. so more people see it. Um, in essence, once once you have a thousand people who say I like this enough to subscribe to it and watch it enough to get the watch hours, they then know that you're a fairly safe bet to put ad content on. Thus, if they can put yeah. ad content on you, exactly. they, they push you out more, um, and so more people will see us, and we will grow this community. But we will always know who 
was here yeah. first. Because let's be clear, we aren't going to be explaining Roger the Beaver. So you either get it or you get it. Um, we aren't going to be explaining Warboner. Mm -mm. Those who get it, get it. So if you were here, if you were here from the get go, then you know, you know. The early days, you know. Club. You know. You you know. know. I like that. The, the early days, Club. The yeah. Early days, Club. And we love you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, guys. The founding Thank members. You. I really appreciate it. I'm really yes, intrigued to see what sort of <laughs> it's on its way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm really interested to see what adverts they put on us. Oh, I was just thinking that. What what adverts are we safe for? <laughs> Contraceptives. Because <laughs> <laughs> Because Timmy is the reason for Timmy should advertise condoms. Timmy should be Timmy is a yeah. reason. Durex needs Timmy. That was that was Timmy it. Is the oh, reason why. Needs Durex. Yeah. Wasn't that that was a Durex advert once, wasn't it? Do you remember the kid in the supermarket having a padding? Screaming. Oh. And it was just like Durex. <laughs> oh. Condoms. Andra, yes, the Dr. Cat oh. jingle on hitting 1,000 subscribers. Oh. Sorry, Cat. Um, do you know what? We haven't got a past problems post bag. All right. Um, we so this week. We, I have got my word of the week. Um, and then I tell you what, I'll I'll ruminate, I'll cogitate, and I'll do a 1,000 jingle for like 10 seconds Whoa. in the break we would have normally been using for past problems post bag. And because we've not been sent a past problems post bag, that means the I widows can't... of Lancaster, I'm not today. Outside. Not today, <laughs> babes. Not today. Can't do it. Um, so do send your past problems post bags yeah we will recap all that at the end where you can see it all too um, <laughs> a bit mature if i go in durex adverts and weird shit to be honest yeah weird shit Fair. is the order of the day don't google that <laughs> um no uh, no um no yes so today we are discussing the Neville. the Neville. That's N for Neville. Uh, Neville's, you probably know Neville. Warwick. Neville's were everywhere during this period. Um, I saw Julie yeah, come right. on Instagram. I remember him saying to me that, that sort of in the, in the medieval period, you couldn't pull back a bed sheet without finding a Neville. Dirty fuckers. And um, it was a Neville, actually, ironically, who made Edward IV and Richard III a Beaufort. Mm. Because their mother was Cecily Neville, who was the granddaughter Oh. of Joan Beaufort. Right, I've oh, I've been writing out oh, family oh, trees all afternoon trying to get my head around this. this it, I, will say, I, will, I will say about um, Warwick the Kingmaker, this, I mean, I love Wars of the Roses, so I'm, I'm a bit more at home this evening, but there is a lot about this guy. This is quite abridged. It is a comp, well, most periods of history complex. This is a complicated period. And I will, I will do my best to make it even yes. more complicated. Yes. So, in my first and, 10 and the family trees are. Everyone's related. The family mm -hmm. tree of the reef. There's some borderline. Oh, they've incest. all got the same name. Everyone, they, yeah. like, everyone's a fucking Richard or an Edward. Or an, an oh, Anne. George. Women at Anne. Everyone's Loads fucking Anne. Anne. Anne's are they? Elizabeth. Lucky Anne. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Lex, sorry. Like, Call her, they call her legs akimbo yes. Anne. That's what they call her. Um, bury me in a white shape coffee. She's Anne. the only one smiling in her portrait. So she is. She is. Um, we 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 did discuss and debate how to divide Warwick up, hand Oi. drawn and quartered. Oi. Um, and and so you're going to find out. So um, Philip is going to go first. Yeah. Then I'm yeah. going to then I'm going to flip reverse it and slide and on I in get, there. And then I get the sloppy leftovers. And then okay. and then Catherine's going to come in and stir our porridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hate that expression. I've never heard no that. No one wants before. to stir another man's. And I don't. <laughs> oh, no, okay. Don't Google that. <laughs> I've just got it. Oh, God. <laughs> right then. Good times. Ah, oh, so <laughs> yeah. Let's let's get into Richard. So. <laughs> Richard, he's born on the 22nd of November, 1428. Um, and he, uh, his parents are another Richard Neville, so we're straight into two people with mm -hmm. the same blinking name. Right, so Richard is the son of Richard and his wife, Alice Montague. She is the heiress to the earldom of Salisbury. So... Our Richard, I'm going to call him our Richard's father, is the Earl of Salisbury via his wife. Um, now, the Neville family 
in themselves, though, are titled by this point. Um, our Richard's grandfather, Ralph Neville, um, is uh, was given the Earldom of Westmoreland by Richard II at the end of the 14th century for his services to the crown against the Scots. So, yeah. um, so, so there's already an earldom. Now, that presumably is what led to his son, Richard, who became the Earl of Salisbury, making such a good match um and their daughter in fact married the duke of york which of course will who will come up a lot in this story um our richard is it says married in the thing that i read but i'm presuming betrothed at the age of eight mm. uh to um uh, um yes another anne oh, and <laughs> i know already tired and- little of anne <laughs> This is a quick drinking game for this episode. Oh. Take a shot whenever we have a rich door and Anne. Jesus, no, don't. Your liver and kidneys yes. will climb out of your arsehole. Don't do yes. it. Yeah. Don't do it. It will yes. leave your bum hole. Yeah, and trippy don't do it. Cat, pretty pick. That's alcohol poisoning for sure. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Literally. 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 Uh-huh. Literally. Your retinas will fall off. Stop it. Don't do <laughs> it. And I, I am I'm going to test you on this afterwards as well. So, yeah. So, Richard, our Richard, marries. <laughs> our Richard. Our Richard. <laughs> Ah, Richard. Oh, Richard. Richard. I oh, grew up bet. in a family that everyone was our Anne, our Richard. Our, I had a, a special I, from the north. I was going to say that's a <laughs> northern thing. The north. Yes. I'm not even from the Com- north. Compared to me, you are. Yeah, I was going to say compared to us, you are. Yeah, yeah that's, you, that's good. In fact, technically speaking, often. I'm even more southern than Cat. You, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. We had a lot of ducks in my family. My granddad used to call my nana duck. Oh, see, now that's northern. Yes. I, I don't know. Was northern, yeah. It is northern. It's the only thing you used to do that was northern, but you used to call her duck. Huh? But well, my grandma used to tell me that she wouldn't fancy people bake, boil, stewed, or fried if they do dozen in diamonds, which is not really appropriate to tell to a four-year-old. But there we are. Yeah, it's a weird old thing. Yeah. What's the anyway, female version of Timmy? Ooh. It's got to be something enough. like a. Oh, an actual female version of Timmy. Oh, yeah, no. that's Cat. <laughs> Cat. No, I I, yeah, actually, that is fucking true. As a kid, I was the Timmy. Oh. I was the, I was the, the one who just school. Put probably Cat. <laughs> it was fact, yeah. fact. At school, my mum got called at school all the time because I was like, I was in the sewing circle. I was at the sewing circle at school and I was I was spitting straight facts about all sorts of stuff that a, that a four-year-old should definitely not know. There we should go. Should have known. Oh, uh, La Serena says Tiffany. Timmy and Tiffany. Oh, Tammy, nice. Lisa says, yeah. 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 Anyway, Esme sorry. Anyway, anyway, everyone agrees with Silk. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, <laughs> anyway, so our Richard Anne. marries Anne Beecham. You may have heard the name. Rather a large deal in this country. <laughs> <laughs> her dad, <laughs> her father is the 13th Earl of Warwick. So, so he marries Anne. Her father is the 13th Earl of Warwick. Um, uh, now, his his wife, Anne, is actually the daughter of uh, of Richard's second marriage to Isabel Dispenser, another name you may well have come across. Yes. Um, now, the, the earldom of Warwick is inherited by Anne's elder brother, Henry, when uh, her father, Richard Beecham, dies. However... He doesn't. He doesn't live for much longer. But he he does have a daughter by the time of his death. So she becomes. She's only an infant at the time, but she becomes uh, the fifteenth Countess of of uh, of Warwick. She dies by the time she's five years old. So it passes to Richard's wife Anne, and through her, therefore, he becomes the sixteenth Earl of Warwick. So actually. Both both Richard Neville, so our Richard and his father, both get their titles via their wives. Mm-hmm. So his his father's the Earl of Salisbury. He's now the Earl of Warwick uh, in yes. 1449, I think. So so that's how he gets the yeah. title Earl of Warwick. Yeah, right, mm-hmm. you caught up. Yeah. <laughs> right. I feel like we're going means... to need a whiteboard. Are we going to need to do like family yeah. trees? We're going to need to like a whiteboard. I do like a whiteboard. I think we we might need to invest in a in a family whiteboard because we this is this is only going to happen more and more. (laughs) One of us stood. One of us stood there going here. Yeah, Yeah. here is who is related to the pointer. Yeah, the important things to remember. 
I haven't even spoke about his mother. So his mother is, um, so, so she is the one, of course, that his father gets the Earl of Salisbury through. So imagine she's got the title, she's got the land. So you've got them. Mm. Then on his wife's side, you've met, you've got the Beechams and you've got the dispensers, both powerful land magnets land magnets magnets landowners etc so you've got all these uh things that he's either fully or partly heir to so he's incredibly yeah. rich and powerful so there sets the scene a little bit now where am i <laughs> though right so i mentioned that his wife is a daughter from the second marriage so when they inherit the uh, the earldom of warwick that is disputed by the husband of the eldest daughter from Richard Beecham's first marriage, who was the Duke mm. of Somerset. So this 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 pitches Somerset against Warwick, which is going to continue now throughout. So that's why that's important. Um, uh, okay, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, now, Richard um, Warwick, so let's call him Warwick from now on then, um, is, he's been made a knight, possibly at the coronation of Margaret of Anjou, which happens in 1445. And he fights on behalf of the king, again against the Scots, like his grandfather had done. Um, so he's, he's shown in the service of Henry VI, fighting for him in 1449 in the north of England. Um, in 1452, this is when the Duke of York rises up for the first time against um against Henry the Sixth. And it, like that's complicated as to what was he actually rising up to do. It's not really anyway, that that's this kind of a that's a whole discussion. other it's yeah, yeah it's like yes. so um now both Warwick and his father Salisbury fight on be on behalf of the king at that point. They are siding with Henry the Sixth. Um, the Duke of York is forced to disband his troops and um, come down to London and swear an oath of allegiance. Well, actually, he's put in prison first for three months. <laughs> then, he, then he decides he will swear the oath of allegiance, which says he won't rise up against Henry VI again. Mm. Um, I don't know mm -hmm. if he had to stand on the Bible at the time or not. So, um, <laughs> but the following year, you've still got Warwick in open dispute with the Duke of Somerset. Now, the Duke of Somerset, who obviously was peed off that he didn't get the inheritance of the Warwicks, um, is a favourite of Henry VI, a favourite of Margaret of Anjou. He's incredibly powerful um, because of his closeness to the king and queen. And he gets granted part of the dispenser inheritance. <sighs> I'm not going to go through the family tree again, but that was part of what Warwick should be getting. And the king and queen um, uh, give some of this away to Somerset. So this is this is clearly building tensions. Now, in the same year, Henry VI falls gravely ill. He has one of his episodes. He's incapable of ruling. And with that, Somerset's power grows. Um, and he's almost in complete control of the government. So Warwick at this point, warring with Somerset, basically, my enemy's enemy is my friend. He sides with York. So this is how Warwick and the Duke of York now become on the same side so somerset's power is is sort of is is high but there's the the english suffer a defeat in france and with that his popularity um uh, diminishes quite quickly and york's rises and he is made protector in march 15 uh, for, sorry oh so 15 1454 um and um at that point, York is supported by Warwick and his father Salisbury. He makes Salisbury actually Chancellor of England. So the so with the rise of, of Warwick, the rise of Warwick, uh, sorry, excuse me, with the rise of York, Duke of York, the rise of Warwick and Salisbury as well. Um, then uh, the king in, uh, by the time, well, early in 15, 14, always oh, say 15, sorry. 1453 the king actually recovers for a while and is able to um, resume control and Somerset is reinstated and everything um, so Warwick Salisbury and the Duke of York all head back up to north where the north where they've got their lands um, of course with York not being around he can be painted as a usurper he can be painted as power hungry and as a traitor and so he's um they they actually go up north and they 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 start to um, build their armies. 
Um, and he, so what York wants to do is basically get rid of the people he terms traitors, the people who are currently around Henry VI. So he's seeing it as sort of liberating the king, I suppose, and getting rid of people who are taking advantage. He is the most senior royal male, adult male. So mm. it's kind of like from his point of view, I suppose it could be argued someone needs to do this job and I'm the best placed for it. So anyway, so it's sort of a nuance that perhaps is, is missed a little. Um <clears throat> So with this, though, you get the first clash between York and Lancaster on the street of St. Albans in May um, 1455. The Duke of Somerset is killed, as is, um, I haven't even mentioned the Percys, but they're another massive family in the north. Yeah. They don't like the Nevilles. They side with the Lancastrians. Warwick are on the side of York. So you've got, so it's not just a Lang, it's not really just a, a Duke of York versus Henry VI. You've got the Nevilles in there with the purses, and, you know, there's lot, there's people scrapping about their. Yeah, the old, the old, the well. old saying was, there's the old saying that the North knows no king but a Percy. So yeah. basically, the, the Percy's are the, are the, or in North, are the Dukes of Northumberland. And uh, it got so bad that when it comes to sort of the reign of Elizabeth um, and James, they are forced to not be in the north because they are such a source of trouble. And that's why they end up down um, at Petworth. Huh? Oh. So there you go. Ooh. They become rusticated. <laughs> they rusticate them. Sorry. So, um, yeah, so that and that clash is set off by the fact the king has um, uh, uh, summoned all his nobles to Leicester, where... So York is included in in that. He's supposed to be going. He doesn't want to go because he thinks, right, what's actually going to happen is my power is going to be subdued and we be made to, at, at best, I'm going to be made to swear another oath of allegiance, perhaps even lose my head. So we're not going to do that. They, they So they, they intercept um, the king and a fairly small army of around 2,000 in St. Albans. They have around 7,000 troops with them. Um uh, it's a very quick battle. It's only about half an hour, but a significant um, uh, element to the win is that Warwick leads a surprise attack. Um, and um, he's 26 years old at this time, but this establishes him, uh, his military reputa reputa reputation. So, uh, yeah. So, and the day following um, uh, the Battle of St. Albans, York, they've got the king, sorry, they've captured the king. So the Duke of Somerset is dead. Percy is dead, Duke of Northumberland, and they've captured the king, who is then taken back to um, to London and York is made protector of England. So Warwick, by this point, is allied with York in a big way. There's no going back now. Um, and, um, and why not? Because as protector, York can give him more stuff because, you know, he's not rich enough and powerful enough already. So what he made, so he makes him constable of Calais. This gives him strategic power. It gives him military power. Calais has the biggest, the largest um, standing army in the English territories. Um, and he took up that post in July 50, 1456. Why do I keep saying 15? 14. Oh, so because we live in the Tudor period most of our lives. Say, yeah. oh, and, it's, and, it's, yeah. and, and numbers anyway. are fucking hard. Let's be honest. They're hard. And it's it's numbers... close enough to like, you know, if we go one way or the other a lot, it's, it's easy enough to remember, but it's all a bit... Yeah. Really you know, my daughter is, is, yeah, indeed, Catherine is right. 14 is indeed next to 15. <laughs> yeah, if 14 is <laughs> that's next that's to 15. My daughter's <laughs> about to do further maths at GCSE. I can't even oh, do for, uh, dates. Oh, no, I right. can't do my time tables. can't do dates. Oh. No, can't do a phone number. Yeah. Bugger that for a game of soldiers. I got anyway. A for my maths GCSE. Oh, well done, you. Oh, look at you. Oh, oh, Billy, oh, big oh, bollocks oh. over here. <laughs> So while he's constable of Calais, he dabbles in a little bit of piracy. Um, and numbers are hard. Numbers are evil, Rebecca. You are correct. Rebecca's correct. up in York, where our Duke, our grand old Duke of York is up. Anyway, um, so yeah, against but it's all right because it's only against Castilian and um uh, Hanseatic fleets. So we're I don't know. Um, I feel okay with that. <laughs> but he's, but he's, he's dabbling. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> hey, everyone was okay. We were having a good time. It's, it's just, yeah. what's, what's, a bit, what's a bit of piracy between foreign nations? It's a small a soupçon of raiding boats. Everyone likes tradition, don't they? Everyone likes a good tradition. 
If they'd I mean, have gone past and he hadn't have had a little nibble, they'd have been like, where is he? What's, what's, wrong, and what's wrong with our stuff that you don't um, want to come and nibble Dorothy, at? Exactly. Dorothy it would have been an affront. Dorothy's, yes. one, Dorothy's one comment of the of the week, I think. He dabbles in a little bit of piracy because he's R. R. Richard. Richard. <laughs> win, win, win. <laughs> yeah. It's a dad joke. It's referential. <laughs> Fabulous work. Well we like it. We like it a lot. Um... <laughs> Okay, where am I? So, yeah, so he's he's dabbled in a little bit of piracy. Um, in September 1459, he, he comes back to England, bringing with him part of the garrison from Calais. He now, he now feels like he owns them. They're up for a holiday. Eek. So they come over. Yikes. And they meet up with York and Salisbury. So Salisbury, remember, is his father, Duke of York, and then the Duke of York as well at Ludlow. But this all goes completely wrong because the garrison um, defect. Um and the, the they were defective they defected and it meant that york um york actually escaped over to ireland with his second son edmund mm -hmm. and uh warwick his father salisbury and the eldest son of york a little man you may have heard of edward who at the time was earl of march he would become the future edward the fourth he escapes with warwick and salisbury over to um back to calais mm. so so Edward, Earl of March, is now under Warwick's wing mentorship. This is this is the start. Um, 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 bit of to and fro in. Um, in June 1460, Salisbury, Warwick, and the Earl of March um, land at Sandwich, which is on the, is on the Deal coast? coast, right there. They come back um, and march. Um, march up north. Salisbury is left to take over the Tower of London, which he successfully does. Um, and um, Warwick and March catch up with the king at Northampton. They take him prisoner again. Poor little, poor little Henry. <laughs> poor little Henry. It was not going well. Yeah, it's him. never going well. No, no. Um, not, his later, fault. not his fault. Not his fault. Later on that year, York, uh, when it seems like seems to be when it's safe to do so, but um, comes back from Ireland. He goes to Parliament in October 1460, and he puts his hand on the empty throne. So Henry VI is captured in prison, being looked after. But uh, Duke of York comes back, he puts his hand on the empty throne. This is symbolic of his intention. Now, I would have to look into it a lot, lot more before I tell you exactly what I thought his intention was. I don't know just, whether it's... A, whether it's a part of me that's like, you know when you're playing tag as a kid and then you touch the tree and go, I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> get me. A homie. I've been a homie. <laughs> Can't tag me now. Well, that I, wasn't it, didn't turn out to be the it, case. I'm at home. And not I'm at home, not it. <laughs> that did, yes. yes. It didn't turn out to be the case. So um yeah, so it's a symbolic gesture. Maybe Julian Julian probably I hope Julian's not watching because it's probably I'm probably butchering this. But um he yeah, so he puts his he puts his hand on the phone and it's on the somewhere. He's busy then. That's fine. Uh, yeah. So he's. Um, he. It, it, yeah. And it's symbolic of. Uh, I don't think someone would do that to, as an intention. Oh, I'm going to usurp the. It's. It was more an intention. We need to do something about this, and we need to sort it out. Yeah. How would they know when Henry the Sixth was going to ever be well again? How he was pretty ineffectual when he was well. Yeah. There's a. There's a need to have some stability, and York is offering it. He's saying, "I can do this. I can offer it." Nobody there is yeah. quite happy. Yeah, me, me. Nobody me. there is quite happy with this. And so this this um, results in some sort of negotiation and a par uh, act of parliament, the act of accord being passed in on the 25th of October, 1460. Now that stated that York would be protector and would become king at the death of Henry VI and that then his bloodline would inherit the throne. Henry VI has a son. Yeah. Henry VI. By Margaret von Schoen. Yeah. <laughs> By Margaret von Schoen, <laughs> who kind of, you know, she, she's not going to take this lightly. Um, yeah. uh, so a bit of an odd, it sort of, it doesn't suit anybody, this this act. This this hasn't sorted anything out. Mm -mm. Um the and worst by, compromise since the dawn of time didn't work. Yeah, and so by December, as a lovely little Christmas present, they decide to have another battle. Uh, well, they have a battle—the Battle of Wakefield. <laughs> oh. Ooh, Wakefield! 
Battle of Wakefield. I mean, at this point, it's, it's a family reunion. They're all fucking related. They just they're they're family, family reunion and, and kick the shit out of many, each other. Many it's family just, reunions end just as badly, if not worse. So. Any given Christmas, it's babe, weddings just, that end like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They turn like, up and fuck um, up and fuck off. Yeah. Well, although the Duke of York doesn't survive this one, <laughs> so. um this is the Battle of Wakefield is where the Duke of York is killed in the fighting. Also, his uh, second son, Edmund, the one who had fled to Ireland with him. Warwick also loses his younger brother in the fighting, Thomas, and his father, Salisbury, is executed the following day. So for the York side, they this is disastrous, actually. They they lose yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, Warwick, I'm not quite sure. It wasn't there. Anyway, so he marches... Uh, he starts to march north, but he's forced to flee at the Second Battle of St. Albans um, because he's lost. <laughs> uh, but he goes off and he joins Edward, Earl of March. So Edward, who's about to become Edward IV. He's just had a great time at Mortimer's Cross and he did win that one. So he's um, <laughs> <laughs> he having a ball. Um, yeah, and he was, it's a, he was winning that one. He's like, Woo, I won mine. What happened with you? No, no, not so good. Oh, I mean, oh, well. today, I'm going to be king. Today, yeah. with Macarena and a bit of ups upside your head. At that time, it's like, let me have a melee. I'm going to try and split your face open with a sword, mm. cousin. Mm. Love you long time. Love you dips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, um, so you've then got you've got Warwick. Um, who's now lost his father and you've got uh, Edward who's also lost his father back together and they march on London. Margaret von Schies has a, uh, she's sort of hesitated in what to do next. By the time she's made up her mind, they're there. Our London are sympathetic to the Yorkist cause for whatever reason. Um, and they, they managed to, to take the city and Edward is proclaimed king. So now we're in March, 1461. Um, that is quickly followed at the end of March by the Battle of Towton. This mm. is the bloodiest, deadliest, nastiest battle ever to be waged on English soil. No one had a good time there. No, no one had a bad good reunion. Time there. Bad it was a reunion. bad reunion. I mean, the crops, though, were fabulous for years afterwards. Um, <laughs> but uh... every cloud. <laughs> Compost, Ooh, friends. What a taste. Human composting. Taste. Yeah. Mm. This bread's um, a bit like black meaty. pudding. Mm. <laughs> it's bread like black pudding. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. Very good for you. That's all I can say. Uh, so, no anyway. No iron deficiencies. In no iron deficiencies, though. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca, yummy food. She's up there now. She's probably still reaping the rewards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway so uh we have more deaths on the um well we have a lot of deaths clearly it's just the bloodiest battle but the duke of northumberland the next one another percy he dies and margaret von Gieu, henry the sixth and their son skidaddle over the border into scotland they're not very far away by the way they're only like they're only like just into scotland they're they're keeping their eye on what's going on but mm. edward returns to london for his coronation warwick remains in the north to keep the peace in inverted commas. He, he's keeping everyone subdued. Um, remembering as well that, so so not only is Warwick now the new king's right-hand man, he's inherited all of his lands. Um, the lands of his wife is, 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 is the big, is the, yeah, is the big bollocks. His income is second only to that of the king now. Jeez, yeah. Mm. It's like earning, it said seven thousand pound a year. I don't know what that means, but you know, millions in today's money, millions. It's, millions. Say, it's not like, yeah, he's minted. Oh, yeah. too powerful. He's yeah, minted. it's a bad choice, as my son says. Yeah. That's a bad choice. Bad. <laughs> yes, it's correct. It's a bad choice. Correct. Um, but but that wasn't enough. So he has more titles. He gets the captaincy of Calais back. Um, don't know what he does with this time. And he also becomes the steward of the Duchy of Lancaster. The Duchy of Lancaster is huge, very, very profitable. Yes. Um, so not only is he, um, so he's Edward's right-hand man. Like I said, I, did I say earlier? He's a little bit like, no, I haven't said it yet. I'll, I'll say uh, it. Is, he, he becomes a little bit like, to Edward the Fourth, like Wolsey to Henry the Eighth. Mm. You know, Warwick is doing the shit while Edward is doing all the good stuff he's he's enjoying himself 
Um, and um, he he negotiates a uh, a truce with Scotland. We well, tries to, but 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 then Margaret, because she's quite a dude, she reinvades with French troops over the Scottish border. Excellent. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, spicy. so you've got, <laughs> I, spicy. She is a feisty one. Uh, she and, is. Um, we like, we like a bit. Of she, I mean, she she continues on her quest for quite a while after this, but we won't be able to cover her today. Um, yeah, so and then so fighting basically erupts again. The the way they think they're going to actually settle this this time is by by a peace treaty with the Scots and the French, and Warwick is going to lead this. Now, with the mm-hmm. peace negotiations with France, um, so with Edward, Edward's, Edward's only 22 at this time. Anyway, he's saying to Warwick, mm-hmm. yeah, you, you, you take, you know, with my blessing, you go and, and sort out the, the peace negotiations with France. And um, and obviously we'll need to, oh, Alberta's just looked at it's um, about $4 million a year. Mm. So, yeah, so Warwick is very... Loads of money. I reckon actually in buying power, I reckon you're looking at a lot, lot more than that. Mm. Yeah. But um, inflation. Inflation, all that kind of stuff. Um. And so part of these peace negotiations with France is going to be a marriage alliance because that's how you do it. You, 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 mm. nah, that's how they keep trying to do it. I mean, it never bloody works. Yes. But anyway, they were going to cement, <laughs> cement peace with, um, with, uh, uh, with the marriage between the 22-year-old Edward and Louis XI's daughter, the unfortunately named Bona of Savoy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. What? I mean, maybe that's why he said no. Oh, I don't know. Oh, my darling, my darling Bona, come to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me to <laughs> stop talking to my dick. I wasn't. <laughs> In all my life, I've never known a Bona quite like you. You're the very best Bona I've ever had. <laughs> Bona, Bona, come Bona. Bona. And actually, I'm I'm sorry, but if you see her portrait, she was bloody ugly as well. So, oh no, mm. oh, lack of no. boner. So lack of boner, yeah, boner, no boner. You can't have two boners in bed. I mean, you can. <laughs> uh, you you well, certainly not, not if if you certain... like a portrait. So, yeah, you're right. Just ask, just ask Edward the second. You can definitely have two boners in bed. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't. It doesn't tend to make a baby. That's and that and that is no. that is kind of the poor. Point. They want they want you banging out kids. So <laughs> lickety split. So so Warwick is working. She was not blessed to... in the name of the face. No. Boner <laughs> of Savoy. Yes, yes, Maria, you did catch you did catch that right. Boner of Savoy. B O N A. Boner of Savoy. But, you know I have emphasized the well. Savoy effect. So Warwick is working really hard on these peace negotiations. Um, the marriage is part of those, and um, he works for these on. Uh, for weeks and he is feeling like the dog's bollocks because he's in France. <laughs> he's, you know, Edward's not there. Or he's, I don't actually know where they, I think he went to France to do this, but either way he is um, the King's representative. He has carte blanche. He can, he can do these negotiations. So he's like, you know, he's, he's, he's feeling great. He's feeling great. Um, it, and, and to the point he's, he's recognized as being so influential and powerful that a French dignitary, dignity is getting late. Yep. French dignitary <laughs> jokes that England has two rulers, Warwick and another whose name I've forgotten, whose name I've forgotten. So, <laughs> oh, um, quick, let me eat some brie oh. and be more French. <laughs> 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 yeah, Ooh. I am being very laconic. I'm going <laughs> yeah. to go smoke a gaulois. <laughs> I apologize. Anyone French? I'm is so it, sorry. This one, this I'm so casual sorry. Racism. I'm so sorry. It's, xen- it's xenophobia. It's, and um, I'm sorry. Yeah, but it's like the old, you know, it's the English French thing. We, we, yeah. um, but yeah, so, so it's very funny. Now, Warwick, feeling very, very happy with himself, uh, goes along to an assembly of senior nobles in the September, so September 1464 at Reading big, Abbey. And he's going to make, he's going to make his big announcement. He's very happy with himself. Yep. Uh, he has arranged Edward's marriage. He has the peace treaty sorted. Why we all... weren't even there? It was all that time ago, and we're all still going. Oh shit! Dum, dum, <laughs> dum, dum. Before he has chance 
to stand up. Edward stands up and makes his happy announcement that he's guys, guys, guys. already married. He's oops. not married. Did it Almost five months ago, right in the middle of Warwick doing, uh, in the middle of his negotiations with the French. Warwick is flawed. Indeed. He's gutted. He's humiliated. <laughs> and he Indeed. is angry. Indeed. The The bride... Indeed is the widow of a of low ranking nobility she's already got two sons so anyway this is enter of course elizabeth woodville who's the widow oh. of sir john gray he'd been killed at the second battle of st albans in in 1461 fighting for yep. the lancastrians but her side. father <laughs> her father uh, right, he's dead now Irrelevant. For, well, fought against. No, he, he. Her father wasn't dead. Wasn't dead at this time. But he had. No, he had. Husband. Oh yeah, he's dead. dead. Yeah, Very but dead. her father had also fought for the Lancastrians at the Battle of Toton. So she had clearly been rooting for the other side mm. for the rest of the time until she could bag and bed the new king. Now <laughs> she also brought with her. <laughs> no one expects this word, Phil. <laughs> I'm here. She might have, like, that, might the be, door. that might be my comment of the night. Like she just she just boots in the door and be like, boom, motherfucker. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. And I'm metal as fuck. Let's I go. I'm here. So but not that, only that, is, is she that how it went down, in fact. Not yeah. only is she there, she brings with her an entourage of of <laughs> Carpet baggers, basically. She has her <laughs> she has her parents. She has three brothers, six sisters. They all make blinking good marriages, including oh her twenty God. a twin, her yeah, twenty year old wrong. brother, Whoa. who marries the I'm imagining quite happily single sixty five year old Countess of Oxford. She she was fine. She was sorted. She was leave her alone. Said, she was. <laughs> Sorted out. I bet they were both delighted married. with that arrangement. Well, leave, leave Nana wants. alone. Stop touching yeah. Nana. She's my Nana now. Yeah, but mm, no. So, no. so um, level. So he's but Edward's basically been cockled. He's married a woman who's brought no <laughs> political advantage and a vast amount of expensive baggage. Was... Yeah, mm, that's a fair summary. So. At her coronation, I mean, it pisses a load of nobles off. It's going to. They, you know, the, the, not only has she risen out of nowhere, their king hasn't made a good alliance, and she's brought with her uh, all these people who are mopping up the marriage market. Um, however, they all do attend her coronation in May 1465 at Westminster Abbey. All of them, that is, except Richard Neville, the Earl of Warwick. It's Candelo. And this is where I leave you. <laughs> Can I just say, there's an excellent comments coming up here on YouTube. You. If you don't follow us on YouTube, go down to YouTube oh, no, because the comments <laughs> excellent. You can go back and watch the live feed as it replays. You can, but, but there's some absolute crackers coming up here. <sighs> <It's all about laughs> waking up and choosing violence. <laughs> um, Wow, it's right, time. before we before we get on to mine, it's time for word of the week. And of course, as it's me, that might be one yes. thing. That means yes. Can. Ah. Can. It's Can. Can. Right. <clears throat> I would like you to tell me what gotch gutted means. Gotch gutted. It sounds like someone's cleaned a beaver or something. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, no. the naughty beaver, not the fur. Well, it could be a furry beaver. Maybe it is a furry beaver furry. until you've gotched it. Ah, got ah. Um, Rebecca gotch says gobsmacked. That's. I mean, it's a good shout. Gotch gutted simply means the person who is. Popped belly. Oh, Daddy Pig loves oh, to dig. Says Daddy being Pig's fat. Yeah. Uh, that correct. Does Daddy Pig, have you got? Have you got a copy of Can? Uh, Sun, Sunshine <laughs> Girl says pop belly beaver. Uh, 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 La Serena says explosive diarrhea. Um, and there's there's two more. I'm gonna give you some. I'm gonna give you some. I'm gonna give you some yeah. bon some bonus words. Um, and these are the opposite of each other. Um, oh. 
bushel bubby and chicken breasted. They are the opposite of one another. A bushel bubby and chicken breasted. Well, we say bubby is like a little baby. That's what mm. we call a bubby. You might, but this is not that thing. Oh. Bushel bubby and chicken breasted. For one of those, I cannot relate. For the other one, I'm... Is one flat-chested and one's can. amply chested? It facts to facts. Truth facts. Truth facts, yes. Um, a chicken breast purse is a lady with small tatas um whereas a bushel baby is like my good self um whereas if in in not too distant future they're going to be in my fucking shoes. <laughs> um so <laughs> spaniel's ears mate fucking hell <laughs> cannot run down the stairs because i will get a black eye because my tits want to kill me <laughs> <laughs> i was told i was told have a baby breastfeed they'll get smaller did they fuck they've got bigger and they've, they've stayed bigger oh. all my bras don't fit much to buy new buggers mm. fuck's sake yeah anyway so, uh, yeah. today's oversharing is sponsored by Cant. <laughs> thank Cant. you thank you um let Love me just it. let me just now it's my turn to to continue on and jump into what happens after the appearance of elizabeth Westwoodville. um so warwick as, uh, warwick is not a happy a happy camper not happy but he is still got loads of money uh, and he's also prominent in foreign affairs. So despite the shenanigans with the French marriage, which wasn't just embarrassing for Warwick, it also must have really fucked off the French. He is still he is still sent back to do a uh, another embassy with both Burgundy and France. There's then a civil war in France while he's doing that. So that derails it. It's then that commission for him is reissued in 1466. So we're still we're still rolling on. Throughout the rest of that year, 1466 and on, there is this um, stream of envoys and ambassadors coming back and forth between England, France and Burgundy. Warwick is trying to fight for a French alliance. That's what he wanted with the marriage. The problem is that the king, who is now really leaning into his in-laws in particular he's taking lots and lots of advice from his wife's father so his father-in-law Richard Woodville who is now who is Earl Rivers uh he is suggesting that they should have a Burgundian alliance so not only is Warwick sidelined and pissed off about the marriage he there's now another senior male in the four who does not have the breeding of Warwick who's doing the advising of the king um, in 1466, October 1466, Edward signs a non-aggression pact with the future uh, Duke of Burgundy, the or well, the heir to Burgundy. Then there's going to be some negotiations for a a marriage and and an end to the wars and all this kind of stuff. Warwick is is completely in opposition of this. Nevertheless. Edward, who wants to increase the pressure on Burgundy so that he he gets more out of this deal, is encouraging rival French negotiations. So, so what's happening is, in effect, he wants to deal with Burgundy, it seems, and he's essentially using Warwick as a patsy to put the pressure on Burgundy by still pretending to treat with France. Warwick is sent on another embassy to France in 1467. He is entertained at Rouen by uh, Louis XI. All of this, though, ultimately doesn't come to much. They, they there's it, it ends up with there being uh, um, a French embassy in a tournament that doesn't go very well. And at the very end of all of that, the king announces that he's now got this pact with Charles, Duke of Burgundy, who's he's now become the Duke of Burgundy. So Warwick has become committed to this French alliance. He has enjoyed being flattered by Louis XI. And because this is all fallen apart, Warwick has now realised actually how little he, is, he has influence on the king anymore. The man who he, in effect, he's called the kingmaker for a reason. He's being increasingly marginalised. Earl Rivers is taking up this position of prominence in Edward's mind and at court. The And as you said, Philippa, there are these marriages. So 
since 1466, Anne Holland, uh, Earl of Exeter, has married the Queen's son, Thomas Grey. Uh, but the king is refusing to marry Warwick's eldest daughter, Isabel, to his brother, George, Duke of Clarence, which is what Warwick wants. He's like, fine, you know, the 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 rivers the daughters of rivers and the grandchildren of rivers they're mopping up all of these marriage give me your brother for my eldest daughter and um ed was like now nah, mate don't think so um no i think not, no. Yeah, not what, today. No. what the problem the problem that edward has is in in some respects it's it's kind of like what happens with henry the sixth henry the sixth obviously is is incompetent to rule because he is mentally unwell but he does a lot of promising of things as well so even when he's able to he's not catatonic he is telling one person they can have something and giving the same thing to somebody else so like you were talking about the inheritances and in some ways edward plays a similar game i think what he's trying to do is split the difference he's trying to equivocate but he does not have the skill that his descendants will have uh namely the the skills of of people like uh Henry VIII and also later Elizabeth to really equivocate, to really play both sides against the line. He can't do that. And what he's also done is he is he is to, to shut Warwick up is he's given him wealth, further prominent, and he's also put him on an international stage. He has put him in a position where people abroad know him, respect him, and potentially might support him. He has created a viper in his own nest. Mm. And certainly Warwick could com could command considerable strength. He's got the power in the north uh, and he's also got the power in Calais. There are places in England where he doesn't potentially exert the power that he shouldn't. So there are vulnerabilities there. But let's he is sandwiching his influence. Calais and the north, that sandwich of influence is going to really put pressure on Edward. He's also popular. He is famous. He is a famed naval hero. And he uses this. He talks about going back to war. People love a war hero. Warwick's the war hero. Whenever he travels, he keeps this open house um, that he entertains lavishly. He will feed people. Um, he was also very keen on stirring on stirring the pot. So if he could inflame tensions and stir up uprisings and trouble, he's like, go on then, troubles, go do that. He's he's essentially referred to as being a rabble rouser. So if mm. he's he's basically he's the last person that you'd ever want to empower and then piss off, basically. <laughs> um he is the one who goes, if you're if he's on your side, he'll do anything for you. But if you fuck with him, you'll find out. Yeah. Ultimately, though, he gets pissed off. When it comes to the winter of 1467 to 68, he has had enough. He goes off in a sulk. He removes himself from court. At this time, there is um, incriminating evidence presented about his regarding his loyalty. Um, it's found out that he has sought a papal dispensation to marry his daughter Isabel to Clarence, which Edward has forbidden. He uh, also said uh, there's a message. There's a message that comes from Margaret of Anjou that points to the fact that he now has the sympathies with the House of Lancaster. He is he is called to come to court to answer it. He doesn't come. So again, there's there's problems. But Edward says it's all right. You can deny the charges from 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 the north. That's all right from Yorkshire, and I'll accept it. The, it is still at this time thought that any kind of sense of rebellion is unlikely but edward still sees the need to pacify him and so he gives warwick the wardship of the young francis lord lovell which is very profitable so he's like fuck you're pissed off i can see it um <laughs> you're 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 my sad fake daddy i i sorry uh, have have wardship take money ultimately though it's going to bubble over when it, the rebellion of 1469-1470 involves him fully taking Clarence under his wing and being like, you're now my favourite baby. You're my best baby. He uh, stokes up some more uprisings. He, um, But he still kind of keeps this sense of decorum and this sense that he's on Edward's side and all of that. He 
is representing the king. He uh, goes along with Charles of Burgundy. He's there when Charles of Burgundy is made a Knight of the Garter at Windsor. Edward then thinks it's safe to go on pilgrimage to Walsingham. And uh, at this point, where it goes, fucking bang on. <laughs> let's let's dance, bitch. Um, Again, and, verbatim, another verbatim quote. Yeah, this yeah. Is exactly, let's let's exactly. dance. Yeah. yeah. So he he's he strikes. Um, rising the risings in Yorkshire. Um, there's things that are stirred by uh, Percy supporters. The all of this, it all kicks off. Warwick takes Isabel and Clarence and his brother. I think his brother, Archbishop Neville, I'm assuming it's a brother, takes him over to Calais and he ensures that his daughter is married to Clarence. At this then, his new brand new son-in-law is like, I'm going to write a thing about how shit my brother is and I'm going to publish it. It's going well. It's going well. <laughs> uh, he calls, he essentially says, let's have an uprising and the people of Kent, known for their predilection for kicking the fuck off, are like, bang <laughs> on, let's go. Um, <laughs> Kent, Kent, Kent. <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> the, but at this point, the king's forces they do, they they uh, have been overthrown at Edgecott. Um, they were being run at that time by William Herbert and Humphrey Stafford. Herbert and his brother Richard are captured and executed. Stafford flees. He's then seized by a mob. Uh, he's lynched. And this at this time, Earl Rivers, so Elizabeth Woodville's daddy and his son John, so Elizabeth Woodville's brother, they are caught and murdered. Mm. The king finds out that his army's been defeated and he's like, oh, shit. He is then captured <laughs> by Archbishop Neville at Olney. He's held at Warwick. And then he's moved to Middleham. A parliament has been summoned in his name to York on the 22nd of September, which is my birthday. Um, I wasn't there at that time, though. I wasn't born. <laughs> but it's my birthday. And um, You got that, everyone. And it's oh, my it's birthday. And then, thank you. And then, um, but at this point, there's, there's rumours going around that Warwick's plan is to depose Edward and put Clarence on the throne in his place, which may have been the plan. If he had, I don't think he would have been any better off because Clarence is also a King Bellend. Um, but mm. there's there is some kerfuffle, and ultimately people are like, okay, 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 we'll get your point, we'll get your point, but now slow your roll. An agreement is reached with Edward. He is released. This rebellion is suppressed. Edward is returned to Westminster and he is a free man. He now, Warwick's played his hand, what's going to happen next? There is a setup, I believe. A guy called Richard Lord Wells and his son Robert attack Ed, um, Edward the King's master of the horse. This is an assault that the king cannot allow to stand. It has he his senior servants have to be able to move around unmolested. So there needs to be a punishment there. Uh, and so I think the plan is that they're going to draw Edward out into some kind of conflict. But as it is, Wells is routed uh, and then he is executed. But before he's executed, he implicates Warwick and Clarence in the shenanigans. So then, knowing this, Edward then marches to confront the rebels of Richmondshire, Richmond Shear, um, and that he's essentially looking to kind of, he's, he wants to go after Warwick. Warwick, at this point, he bottles it and he, he runs away. He's like, oh, oh, fuck. He gets to Dartmouth. He... Can't get support in Southampton, but uh, he does eventually make his way to France. He becomes, with his daughter, he becomes the guest of Louis XI. Louis XI is like, Bibbidi Bob, let me get you to make friends with Margaret of Anjou. Fucking brilliant. I'm going to be. I'm going to be wonderful. Warwick's like, okay, sounds fabuloso. Let me do that. Margaret requires some persuading. Some say that she kept Warwick on his knees 
for a very long time, dirty Gertie, mm. um, oh, before yeah. she finally, dirty bitch, finally forgave him <laughs> and allowed him to stand up. Um, his bone is still there. In, <laughs> the deal involved um, her <laughs> allowing her son Edward, then Prince of Wales, to marry Warwick's other daughter Anne, on the condition that. Warwick and Clarence were going to get control of England before she and her son return. Warwick is formally reconciled to the House of Lancaster. He is now supporting Henry VI. They thus launch an assault on England. Um, this time, because it's in the name of Henry, presumably, and there's Margaret of Anjou's backing, this gets quite a lot of support. Edward essentially finds out that he is in trouble, that this is not winnable. So he, Foxtrot Oscars, he he flees um, abroad to the continent. Elizabeth, his wife, has to go and hide in sanctuary. England is at Warwick's feet. Warwick goes into London in triumph. Henry's been released from the Tower. He's um, at, at Winchester. He's in the care of the, uh, the Bishop, Bishop One Fleet of Winchester. Um, but he is severely unwell. And so Warwick is basically king in all but name. The This is all happening pending the return of Margaret of Anjou and her son Edward. The problem then becomes that at the same time that this is all going on and Margaret's making plans to go back to England and essentially take back the throne for her, for her son in the future... The Louis XI can't keep his powder dry. He is he is prematurely ejaculating his soldiers <laughs> into Burgundy. Um, so he he prematurely ejaculates Today's his metaphor. soldiers into Burgundy. Uh, <laughs> and no, um, imagining them as oh no. And essentially, mm. once that happens, he Burgundy's like, okay, bet, let's do this. He fits out an expedition to help recover Edward recover his kingdom. So he's like, oh, you're going to do that, are you? Buckle up, buttercup. And essentially what's happening is Margaret of Anjou and Edward are now waiting for favourable winds, favourable weather to be able to sail to England and do their claiming. As it is, Edward gets to sea first. He's going... Um, Edward gets himself in Yorkshire uh, and thus he is able to reclaim England. He had thought that when Clarence joined from the West Country, that, um, Warwick had thought that when Clarence joined him from the West Country, he's going to be able to have the strength to crush Edward's re-invasion of England. Unfortunately, the problem is that Clarence goes, fuck this for a lot. <laughs> um, turns out, I love my brother. I forgot. I did a whoopsie. <laughs> I forgot that I loved him. And now we're friends again. Bye bye. Um, I'm no longer on your side. <laughs> on Easter Sunday, the these two the two armies meet each other just north of Barnet. The leggies very go foggy. as well. Pardon me. Do the leggies go as well. The leggies. The dad joke. Armies and leggies. Oh, the <laughs> armies, the leggies. Oh, I like it. I I didn't get that. That was I'm slow of me. So they meet at the Battle of Barnet. The Battle of oh. Barnet is very foggy. Famously, people are mm. misconstruing standards. They're attacking. E their own side because they've misread the standard it's a kerfuffle Warwick tries to flee because they're fucking up um, he's caught, he's killed the Neville brothers are all dead, they are taken, stripped of their armour in shame, uh, back to London and they're displayed there for three days at St Paul's including the Earl of Warwick then the bodies were handed over to the Archbishop Neville and they were put in the burial vault at Bisham. And thus fell Warwick. Mm. Did. Judging, judging by the conversation going on here in the comments, the next advert on our video should be for Viagra. Well, like I said, if you don't get the YouTube comments, you should nip down. <coughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone loves a good boner. 
I am trying to bring just... a picture of Bona, and for some reason, whether I have it as JPEG or PNG or PDF, it is not letting me bring it up. Which is most annoying because you really want to see what Bona looks like. I know you. Let do. me see if I can Google it. Sure, Let me see sure. if I can Google we, it. We could put her on Let Instagram try, afterwards. Let me try. Oh, hang on, hang on. On while, we, while we're doing that, wait, wait, we're going to have wait. another. We're going to have another. Oh, there she is. She wasn't conventionally beautiful <laughs> ever. Oh God, like, bless. in any convention. <laughs> She did. She did, however, though, if you look closely, pioneer the bee necklace. So maybe that wasn't her maybe that wasn't her good side. Maybe she'd be do you know what? Maybe she'd be better not in profile. I don't know why they've done that in profile, poor bitch. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, she probably oh had a great personality. She had a great personality. Hang on, I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull a picture up. You just get it. Oh fucking hell. Oh, let's hope so. Uh, <laughs> don't think she played prop forward. Yeah, I mean, mm, see, it might be a best oh, side. Because... Actually, but she's better than the one Philip of course. She looks, she looks maybe the, the colours done her a little bit to the kind. Hang on, I'll do I'll she, show you the one Philip had. Homely. This is the one Philip had on yeah. YouTube. Oh, Dear yeah. God. It's... Is she part is she... of the synchronized swimming <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> <laughs> is she part of a synchronized swimming team? I, I mean, yeah, it's not God doing any favors. No, it's not. It was it was oh, it, wow. it, 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 and I smiled at a comment earlier. I can't remember who it was. Now. I'm so sorry. He said it was drowning Clarence in a vat of vase. Oh, I can't yeah, get my words thing. out. What my Mine, question is? The ultimate why, drinking game. Why yeah. is her necklace B's and G's? I mean, Bona, but what's the G? Because it's B's it's and G. G. I what's can't see G? that. Clip. Yeah, know. B's and G's. What's the G? I'm going to look into Bona. I don't know. She, I don't know. She, she does marry. She has children, so um, she becomes a reader. She has a lot of kids. Me, she has a nice nose. Um, <laughs> Doug, she's wearing a scrum cap. Look, maybe she didn't want to get cauliflower ears. Maybe <laughs> yeah. in the bedroom. Maybe in the bedroom, maybe the husband she found yeah. was he. He like he liked it rugby style. Pretty maybe bit. she did it's because she's a gangster. <laughs> it's it's bulletproof. Um, before we head into um, right, the leggy sure. bits, I should do my um yes one thousand subscribers. <clears throat> I'm looking Ooh, at yes. uh, right, let's 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 keep it let's keep it tight. Let's keep it quick. Um, you like it tight? <laughs> Sorry. We hit a milestone over on the YouTube. We hit a thousand subs over on the YouTube, so that means we get monetized over on the YouTube. They're going to put ads on our content, and more people will see us, so they're going to see me make up jingles. It's going to be really weird for them, but maybe they will like what they see, and they'll come and be more subscribers to us. The end. The end. Yay! Round of applause. Round of applause. Thank you. Subscribe. subscribe. Like, subscribe. subscribe. Press the bell. Um, Share. Uh, share. Comment. Put Comment. emojis. Do all of the things on all of do the all things. Of the Share with it. your friends. If you've got some, if you've got deviant friends, and I'm sure if you're here, you fucking do. Let's be honest. <laughs> um, and if you don't think you do, look for the quiet one. The quiet one. <laughs> the quiet one is the one you've got to watch out for. The quiet one is that you'll go around there and you'll help them clean out their, you know, their they'll, they'll, you know, they'll have a thought. You think it's their, yeah, they you, think it's like, their cellar. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, "Can you come and help me move?" So you go downstairs and you'll be like, "Why is there? What is this on this wall?" And... And then suddenly you find their gimp mask and their ball gag. Like that friend, the friend that's really quiet. Um, that that friend. Tell oh. them about us because they belong They'll here. They enjoy it. They belong here. <laughs> There's a show on here. Netflix where this bird, whose name I've forgotten, goes around people's houses and turns their spare rooms into sex dungeons. It's great. That's what I think you made up in your mind. <laughs> Honestly, it's just, it's, cat accuses me of life. And goes, did, did you say Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> She's making a note. She's making a note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Um, Shannon's just amazing. found us. Shannon's just found us and subscribed today. Um, Thank you. Well, oh, welcome. welcome. I did you miss the discussion? Enjoy, and I hope you enjoy. And also, mm. if not, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no way back though. So you're here now. You're not. Also, if you don't know who the quiet one is, that means it's you. That means you're the filthy, dirty pervert. Take a good look at yourself. To, uh, yes. <laughs>
<laughs> so good Catherine yourself. knows because it's she's been Catherine speaking from experience because she is a wrong <laughs> <laughs> You see, that would be insulting if it wasn't true. It's exactly. It's not meant as an insult. It's, it's straight facts. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, hang on, hang on, hang on. Who is the Susan Boyle of Willy Jokes and Silly Songs? I have a horrible <laughs> feeling it's you, Cass. Yeah. <laughs> this bitch. I'm not oh, sure I'd be ma- massively flattered. Babe, babe. Like Susan that. Boyle, is she doing all right for herself? God she bless is. Her. is. She God bless is. her. So um, she um, yes, that was a very she, she, rewarding she, she moment can... when she started singing, and they were all picking on her. She was and she started owner singing, of... and then um, she, she was, was just absolutely joy. legendary. Yeah, it was a, a, a fantastic moment of television. I mean, no one picks on me it. though, because I'm a fucking psycho. So mm. yeah, she strikes me. She's got quite a sweet nature. Yeah, whereas I'll kill you. Yes. All that happened is no one had ever plucked her eyebrows. Yeah, and she was a bit. That happened. Someone did her hair, and you're like, "Oh, okay." Hmm. Yeah, she's just a. She's a person. She's a person who she's is clearly very talented. She's a person she's who so... is clearly neurodivergent as well. So the the ableism in that was just gross in the extreme. Um, oh, but yeah, rest TV. Wow. Well. Yeah. Quite... I have mm. actually. I actually auditioned for one of them. Was that what are they called? Whatever that one was. What. <laughs> X Factor, X Factor. one of them. Yeah, I went to um, I went to the NEC, and so uh, basically, I've been involved in two TV programs, and I can tell you for sure that the more supposedly, you know, on the fly on the wall documentary stuff, the more contrived and oh, created yeah. they are. I mean, they're just so. Yeah, I was in the choir with Gareth Malone, and um, yeah, and I auditioned for X Factor, but yeah, there you go. I was going to go on um, Britain's Got Talent, but I lost my ping pong balls on the way. (laughs) Have you found them yet? (laughs) If you hear that, it's just Catherine just walking down the street. (laughs) Found him. (laughs) Sorry, not sorry. Uh, Kitty to me, audition for X Factor 2. I want to see that on 100. Mm? Kitty to me, also audition for X Factor. I mean, we've yeah. got we've got some we've got some talent. We've got it all going on tonight. I've never auditioned for X Factor because <laughs> yeah. I um You're I never can't auditioned sing. for anything. So I can't sing. I can't sing. <laughs> I, I was um I did. It doesn't though, stop a lot of people. Just there was exactly. a dating show. Exactly. There was a dating show on MTV. Oh, I've back in the early aughts, um, which I was deaf. You had to be, I think, eighteen or twenty-one to be on this dating show. Um. I was 14, <laughs> but I lied and I was on the dating show. I didn't, I, I just wanted to go for the experience. I didn't get picked. But because I hid, because I was like, I'm clearly fucking 14. Um, I'm glad to see that they, they vetted everybody thoroughly to make sure that everybody who was there was meant to be there. I did not get my ID, did not get checked once. I was 14, I was supposed to be 18. Um, And Richard Blackwood hosted it. So, and I was there with friends who were also fourteen. So, so there we go. Surprise me. There we go. No, it doesn't surprise you. I, on the other hand, was going to say that g- generally speaking, I've heard that MTV are extremely responsible. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it's allegedly a thing. Allegedly, but, yeah, allegedly. Um, pretty pick. I was fourteen. The blokes were the blokes were adults. I was a child. Um, also, my husband's two years older than me, so I'm not a cougar, but given half the chance. Yeah, give me ten. I've, I've, been been a, I've, time. I've been a cougar. I'd probably rather have a biscuit and a cup of tea, to be honest. Oh mm. my god, Daddy Pig! I think it was singled out. I think it was singled out. I think it was. Yeah. Mm. My old flatmate's sister was on Dating in the Dark. Oh my god, what's that? At least, at least, at least, it wasn't in the one with the, the naked one. At least it wasn't the naked attraction one. Could you imagine? There is. I could never. Be like, oh, okay, I want a date. Let me get my kibbles and bits out on mm. national TV. I would never get my biscuit out for on TV. Nah, I don't, I don't, I, I don't see how that is relevant anyway. It's so well. Ridiculous. I suppose you could say there's no nasty surprises. Look, my flaps are not a nasty surprise. 
Right. <laughs> you don't need to see them before we've asked about like where we went to school and well, shit. You're also like, not tell only... me how many siblings you've got before you see my muff. You're not only sharing it with the person you might be going on a date yeah. with either. You're sharing it with it. It's it's also sorry, like if somebody wrong, if somebody walks wrong. in and they are fully nerd. There's there's not going to be a deep spiritual connection because I'm going to exactly. be looking at you like that is your wang. Your wang is fucking looking at me. I'm not going to remember anything because your because your pee pee is okay. People trying to look me in the eye. I, I was going to say if people don't know what this is, Google it, but don't because you might get so, images. So basically, what naked attraction is is if you don't know, it's hilarious for all the wrong reasons. Bad idea. Every, the first time yeah. everybody watched it, they'll go. So that that's just like that's why you it's should Google. Wild. Basically, they get a load of people and they put them in these sort of different coloured tube things because you eliminate the person you don't want by colour and a bit at a time they they reveal them because they're all in the nads so you look at the bottom half so you get to look at the, the nadgers and the beavers and then it goes up and you get the and then okay. after a while when you've eliminated some of them they get to speak so you can actually hear actually see if they've got any level of personality and then you have to take your clothes off and you come out and you pick one that you want to go on a date with and you put your clothes back on well, Paige has got a good point. What if they have a terrible sense of style? You won't know. That's fair. Um, that is a very fair point. Uh, Amanda Jervis says, I I was, uh, said, very it's kindly said, with a nasty. lot of love, that um, uh, I'm very baby faced now. So you can't for the life of me understand how you got away with being on a dating show when they saw you. Well, I think first and foremost, I was in heels and I had tits in the same way that I was in bars and nightclubs at 14 and 15. Um, my face has always looked like this. There, there is. I, at some point, I will be brave, brave enough to show pictures, but I haven't changed. I, I looked thirty at fourteen. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it's there's been no difference. Um, I into looked, your face. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had, I had massive knockers, and I had this face. So mm. there's just been no change. That's all that's happened. If you got yeah. married, how would you explain that story to your kids? Another very good point. Yeah. <laughs> Also, like, half of the fun of meeting somebody is being like, am I going to get to see you naked? Like, that... <laughs> and you don't want to see... I, I wouldn't want to see someone naked unless I wanted to I see like them naked. People. That wouldn't be the first thing I'd want to do. I don't know. I like seeing people naked. Bodies are fun. Not yeah, corpses. Like <laughs> not, on a, no, not cadavers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not not so public. Oh, I don't know. I don't Sylvia know. B asks an excellent question. How did we get here from the Duke of Warwick? <laughs> well, this is the excellent fun question. It's dark because we just don't tend to know. This is what happens. I suppose it's we should. Since we've been going for an hour and twenty, I suppose we should. Yes, I, I will try. And, I will try and nip tuck this. Um, oh, yeah. that's so. What I <laughs> Well, I mean, so as as I said at the beginning, you can see how extremely complicated this situation is. We, so we thought like, we'd help it out by talking about completely random shit. In it the was middle. just people's people's, just people's, people's brains were melting with the reality of the complication of the wars yeah. of the Romans. So um, it is it's it's, it's 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 it is fascinating. I really would. It's my favourite part of history. So I really would encourage people. Bodies are fun. What corpses? <laughs> 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 I have to specify, just in case. Just, you don't want any, this is, this any is border, borderline. That is a borderline yeeting topic, people. Look, I just, I'm just, I'm just. Do you know what? Carry on, leggy bits. As you yeah. were. Took so, um, so now, so obviously, we are talking about in terms of sort of legacy and everything. And we're talking about Warwick now. We've got him down as a git. <laughs> okay, we went from last jingle to Susan reality TV to new days. <laughs> That's how it happened. That's how we got there. That's how we got there. It's many Obvious. Things, another education. <laughs> <laughs> can you get because this is all thing you can get a BAFTA for? I, oh, I mean, definitely. I, I, I kind of feel like I want to take this into a like um a, for diagnosis. I'm like, what what is going on with me? What's happening? And and how can you medicate it? Because this can't, can't be normal. This can't be normal. Love this can't be normal. It. Mm. Fix mm. it. The subtitle for this episode: Elbow cough. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on. So what, leggy bit? Okay. Tell me about it's it. Some morphine at the moment. That's why. Yeah. Do you have a field day school if he's listening tonight? Oh my god. I mean, it would not surprise me if my son went in and said that he. 
he liked bodies, not corpses. He oh, he called his stuffed mouse Doctor Crippin. And we don't even I know how he knows. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. Oh, my mine's Dr. got my six year old's got a thing about Elon Musk. Kids are weird. I don't yeah. even know how he knows who Elon Musk is. <laughs> Anyway, well, it's probably beaming something into the kids' brain. <laughs> <laughs> right. I said to you yesterday, do you think um, Elon? My mum was talking about one Do you think Snickers? Do you think Elon Musk could invent a teleportation device? And he stood up and went, "He's quite clever, but I don't think so." <laughs> I've analysed. Oh, don't. The question. don't, don't uh, and I said to him, "Don't be so sure." Yeah, don't tell Elon. If anyone Musk, can do it, it's going to be Elon Musk. Or, and he, or do you know what? He'll kill a number of us trying. That's that's what's gonna. I'm sure he wouldn't. Volunteers. I'm there's sure always, he wouldn't. There's always volunteers for that kind of there thing. There are. People very, went to very space. True. People are still going to space. Bugger. Yeah. Off. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Not happening. Every right. part. Of that. Anyway, yes. So we are discussing Warwick. Warwick. <laughs> Take twenty-seven. We are discussing Warwick as a git. Obviously, this is the deceased git series, and this is kind of how we viewed him. But Cat touched a little bit on it actually at the time. And, and even coming into the next century, a lot of people viewed him really quite positively. Oh, my God, what have I missed? Sorry, people are listening. <laughs> um, oh, I'm God, they started I'm... on Elon Musk now, No, no. Um, are you looking at kiddies and me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> tell, her I'm, tell her I'm sorry. <laughs> kiddies and me, you need the ears. Put, head, put a headphone in. I, I'm going to get, we have got a Timmy is a problem AirPod um, case, which I, I need to get for myself so I can show everybody mm. for the required earphones. <laughs> right. Okay. Come on. Leggy bits. Leggy bits. Okay. So, but yeah, in, in his time, he was actually reasonably popular. A um, lot of contemporary evidence of fairly sort of shortly afterwards uh, said he had an attractive personality. He was affable, generous. He felt himself as a very open person. He was quite hospitable. And he was viewed, obviously, as a successful military man, very important. Um, and people recognised the, the way he was able to use his skills to manipulate situations to the advantage of people around him and obviously, therefore, to himself. Um so in 1559, um, the Mirror for Magistrates talked about how, you know, about how they really sort of bigged him up. And bearing in mind as well, he had been a Yorkist and a Lancastrian, but, they, you know, they were posthumously really describing and giving details about how very popular he was. And the Great Chronicle of London described him as generous, valiant, popular and hospitable. And around 1469, part at the time of the First Rebellion, he was definitely viewed as more popular than the king. So in his time, so we look at him like this and we say, oh, he was this terrible person and he was this and he was that. But a lot of this goes back to, I suppose, again, the nature of the time, the type of person that he was. He was very influential. He would certainly probably be the sort of person you'd want on your side, not necessarily to Edward's extent, but you'd want to be in with. So I think in that respect, we need to look at that there's a less skittish element to it. People then didn't view him as we view him now which is important as an overall picture. But also we need to look in terms of honour. So we said, well, he turned his back on Edward and then he incited this rebellion and he did this and he did that. Two-faced bastard, etc. But actually in terms of sort of um, honour and valiant behaviour and all of these types of things, Edward shut on him from a great height. Yeah, He severely undermined him in terms of the fact that he had gone to a lot of effort to set up this French alliance. And he was like, oh, I just married this random bird I found in a wood. Is that a problem? That pretty <laughs> much, that's pretty much what happened, to be honest. So and it's, here's it's her the, family. And here's her family. Yeah, here's all the dickheads that came with her. Mm. So <laughs> it's a bit like, you know, he... It was exceptionally embarrassing and embarrassing on an intercontinental stage at minimum. Mm -hmm. And so he, I think Warwick really did have every right to be incandescent with rage about this. Mm. And the fact that he then started to distance himself from Edward is, he was a human at the end of the day. This, this is, I think anybody would have done this. Did he take it to then the extreme? Possibly. <laughs> did it end badly? It did. Yes. Um, but you know, sometimes you've got to say good chance, haven't you? Anyway, mm -hmm. so in that time, I think we, we look at him and we see, well, you know, he 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 was the kingmaker once with Edward, he became the kingmaker again with Henry the Sixth. But actually, 
if, if you look at his motivations and you look at the way he was treated, yes, it was a gittish thing to do. And yes, it had some serious repercussions which are relevant and need to be considered. But was that the most unreasonable thing he could have done? Was his reaction, yes, but was his reaction unexpected? Was it completely unfair? Can we understand why he then chose to step away from the man that he made? Because let's be honest, Edward was, was, was a, you know, he was a good military commander. He looked the part, which was a huge thing. He was a very tall, strapping young man. And he sort of fitted the physical sort of appearance of kingship. And um, he came from a very powerful Max family. Irons. If he was Max Irons. He came mm -hmm. from a very powerful family. He was ticking lots of the boxes. But he probably wasn't, he was a bit flaky sometimes. And he could be very easily swayed. Mm -hmm. And we see this either, even he's still later. Young, into though, his, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. He's so well. even later into his reign, when he's very established, we're, we're, we're post-Warwick. You know, we get to, well, this is another thing, Tony, but you get involved in the Treaty of Piccany. And he's like, we're up for a rumble with the French. And he went, actually... I think I'll just take a pension from you. So this great war, when it comes down to it, he's got his wife, he's got all her family. He's just kind of giving in to people. When you see Clarence going in with Warwick and then he basically just forgives him and lets him walk back in. These are not the actions of a lot of kingship. So for, for Edward to sort of, it's, it's not going to be difficult for Warwick to turn around and crush Edward, really. He's put him up there. He's not, Edward is not a great decision maker. He can be a little bit flaky in that department. He can be easily manipulated in, 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 in many ways. So as Kat said, Warwick is not a person to piss off. You should know if you're going to piss Warwick off, you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So like you said, he fucked about and he found out. Yep. You know, you, you've got to be a little bit sensible about the decisions you make, the people that you, you're going to alienate and everything like that. Was Warwick's decision to turn against Edward to that extreme wise? Probably not. What was the alternative? Just mm -hmm. to go quietly? There's all his honour. There's all everything that he's built up would have just have been gone. He had in some ways to take some sort of very notable stand to try and end up with something. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he just literally probably would have gradually just disappeared into the annals of history and just been another advisor or something, he never would have really amounted to all he was amounting to. So I think he needed to, needed to go hard or go home. Like, and I he'd been, don't, he'd been I going hard. Him. If you think about it, it was like he'd been going hard since he could probably remember. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. His father was involved and then he's involved. It's interesting, like, so, what else would he do? It's like he doesn't know anything else. So. Exactly. And so in the context of the situation, I don't, as much as he was a bit of a git, I don't blame him. He's less almost. of a git now we've looked into him than I was expecting. That, this this, this is exactly, exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Um, now, so we, we now we look at him as a git, as I was saying earlier. We, we've looked at this in sort of a very different ways. More, more modern historians and even philosophers have written about him. You know, um, saying that, you know, he was he was a turncoat and he was um, sort of always, well, he was always in it for himself, but they were all in it for themselves. This is the thing, you know. Um, he, See, one he, person's turn, turncoat is another person's pragmatic politician. Exactly. This is it, exactly. So he's seen as pr proud, he's seen as arrogant. They were all, all of these things. He had an opportunity. He, I think he was, up until the point at which he was standing behind Henry VI after he got him back on the throne, I think he was always wise enough to put himself in enough of a position of power, but not to look like he was pushing it. He was, I think he was very clever in that respect. When he stood behind Henry VI, he pushed it too far because it was obvious at that point that he was going to be putting all the strings. He was putting a lot of Edward strings, but he had a good enough front with Edward to make it look like he wasn't overly playing his hand. He mm. knew the line at that point. There was a very fine line, and he sat just the right side. He was an exceptionally clever man. Was he foolish? Did he believe himself indispensable to Edward? Possibly. That's always a mistake to believe that you're indispensable. Mm -hmm. And 
but also, you know, his family had been given a lot of lands and tiles. Some of these were being pulled backwards and forwards that he was very angry about. He felt it undermined him. He felt it undermined his family. And that, again, is something that Edward was very, very good at. He gave and he took and he gave and he took. And no one really knew where they were going to stand with things. And that caused, oh, this was one of the reasons that we see so many problems after Edward's death was that nothing was was certain nothing you know people thought they were being given things and then they were taken away it caused a lot of mess and um and the, we, we, the well there's oh, that is again there's a whole other set of stories but edward was a bit chaotic he he really really was um so but Warwick wanted to protect his own position because you would everybody mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. there's nothing unreasonable about that at all i don't think whether or not i say he went away the best way about it debatable but he had a kind of limited set of options to really pack his punch. Um, so, okay. So we look at him as the kingmaker because there were two kings that he made. And I would like to put forward a possibility of two other kings Ooh. that he may have made. And I would like to highlight him his, his role in um, Clarence. So Clarence, also a bit of a prick, but also maybe not the cleverest of pricks and just very, very power hungry. But Clarence mm -hmm. couldn't have been the Clarence that he was without Warwick. OK, so one of the foolish things that Warwick did was that he did marry, as Kat said, he married his eldest daughter, Isabel, to Clarence. And this was against um, the king's wishes, which is always going to win badly. It's always going to be a bone of contention. It's always it's very rare that a someone... Bone of contention. <laughs> <laughs> it's very rare that someone does this and it turns out all right, really. It's an mean, ironic it's really... name. Sorry. Yes, I can think of a couple of examples, but that's a different story. So, um, but they have a couple of children... I may have more than two, but um, they only have two children survive. Um, Edward Plantagenet, the 17th Earl of Warwick, who one of the pretenders says they are, and Margaret Pole, Countess of Salisbury. So I will just say, you know, part of your legacy is, is your family. And so we do see these children, mm. our grandchildren of Warwick. Still, really, if you could argue that these people are still being part of the power play of the Wars of the Roses, even late into the Henrican period, um, because of the the Yorkist threat, there's, there is the, the you know the, the sort of the Catholic edge to the poles in in the late Henrican period, obviously, which is a factor. But there, there the power, the Yorkist power behind these nobles is still seen as very much evident. You know, it is generally accepted that Edward Plantagenet, the seventeenth Earl of Warwick, was executed, so that Henry could seal the match between his son Arthur and Catherine of Aragon. Mm. So this is the the power, the punch that these people still had. Technically, so many years after the Wars of the yes. Roses had apparently ended, we see John de la Pole. He was a Yorkist. He, he came to the Battle of Stoke Field. He was Edward and Richard's nephew. So, you know, you're, you're still seeing, and Clarence's nephew, so you're still seeing a legacy of all these people affecting all these things mm -hmm. later on. So if your legacy is your, um, your descendants, then we've got that part of it. But Clarence, I think, Edward becomes king. Clarence was actually the third son because it went Edward, then Edmund, didn't it? The son that was killed, I think, then Clarence and then Richard. Yeah. So Edward's king for a good nine old years before this has cracked off and, and things have been relatively stable. So Clarence is sat there like, mm, second in line, I'm second in line. And when you're a little bit power hungry and, you know, Warwick's very, very, very astute. He's going to pick up. He knew exactly what Clarence was like. He knew exactly what Clarence was after, you know. And so when it came to the point he used him, he used him for his own benefit. He did, but it may have worked out for Clarence and it hurt Edward. So using Clarence ticked all of Warwick's boxes. Um, I think one of the things I've always said about the Wars of the Roses is the reason we ended up with Henry Tudor is because everybody killed everybody else. That was essentially what was left. <laughs> we wouldn't yeah. have been able to get where we'd got. Um, I think Warwick probably cancel, counselled um, Clarence an awful lot, which is what helped him talk his way out of an awful lot of stuff with Edward. Um, but Warwick played a lot on Clarence's insecurities and he knew that Clarence wanted more. He knew that Edward gave and he took away and that um, Clarence found that extremely... Richard found it very infuriating as well, but Clarence found it extremely infuriating. He was bitter, he was angry. All of that's bubbling away under the surface all of the time. 
So he's married, you know, he's married to Elizabeth to Isabel. They're having these children. All these people are a, are a threat and a competition. Um, but Clarence comes back to the fold. Edward forgives him. And his wife, Clarence's wife, dies. She has a little baby, a baby boy, on the 2nd of December, 1476. This is relevant, I promise. Mm -hmm. And she dies and the baby dies shortly afterwards. About four months after this, Clarence, with no... And so the, 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 the death was probably related to an issue with the birth. Four months later, uh, George of Clarence accuses one of her ladies of poisoning her and killing her. He drags her off, basically trial, has given her a trial and executes her. He has no authority to do this. Around this time, there's lots of arrests at court. He is one of he storms into a parliamentary meeting one day, kicking and screaming off about it. And at this point, Edward is like, no, we, we've just had enough of you. Now, what was meant to have happened is that, because he, he was tried for treason, wasn't he, is that um, he had tried to smuggle his son, so his heir, um, out to the Yorks, Yorks had support in Ireland. Philip mentioned earlier how he'd gone on to, over to Ireland and he was plotting to take down the king. Now, a document is meant to have existed. Now, I'm, I've only come across it and I would have to research more about this to see how accurate it was and who knew about it. But if it's true, then it's really very interesting that there had been documentation at the time put into place when Warwick was making the alliance with Margaret of Anjou that if the Lancastrian line failed, which it had by this point, that Clarence's son would be king. So you see the Lancastrian line fail, you see what you see Clarence trying to get his son out of the country, and you see him making an awful lot of poor decisions. So if this would have got its way. And the Lancastrian line hadn't failed because we hadn't seen all those, you know, those things happen. If Clarence hadn't stepped aside and Warwick hadn't done what he did, mm. then Clarence's son could have been king. Yeah. If Clarence hadn't have got involved with Warwick, Warwick would have found some way to, to, to challenge Edward one way or the other. If, if Clarence hadn't either pursued that line then, or if he hadn't have got involved with Warwick in the first place, Edward, he would have still lived. Edward died. Clarence would have been king. So without Warwick's interference, you had two possibilities. Both Clarence and his son both could have taken the throne. I know that's complicated. <laughs> we have any yeah. questions at this point? Well, I think I, I think I I think as well that there's that in the kind of making of kings, the legacy of Warwick, it, 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 in shaping the legacy of Henry VIII. I would say that the, the the legacy of Warwick. So you talked about the um, ultimate execution of um, of the of Warwick, little Warwick, yeah. little Warwick, to make the marriage of Catherine of Aragon, and then ultimately that story comes back around because it's part of the charge brought against Buckingham. Mm -hmm that he has said that the Tudor line won't, that Henry VIII can't have a son because the line is cursed for the death of little, Buck, of little Warwick. And then, of course, I think we can't possibly forget the fact that um, Margaret Pohl's execution is such an incredible stain mm -hmm. on, the, on Henry VIII's reign. It is vile. And then when it comes to Mary and the shaping of Mary in England... Margaret's son Reginald yeah, is her, is her, and is her, and is her, is sent to her basically from the Pope. The kind of there are two marriages that happen: mm -hmm. Mary marries Philip, and England marries Rome, mm -hmm. and it's Cardinal Pole that is making that happen. And had he not been a cardinal, there was talk about marrying Pole to Mary. Mary, so he could have in fact been King of England, or at least a Prince Regent of it, a king, a, a kind of reg, uh, Regent of England, or perhaps a a consort, a Prince Consort of England. But you so see, he... my other thing is, is if we'd have had Clarence as king, there'd be no Tudors. No, mm -hmm. because he had a son and heir. If anything had happened to him, your only son, you've then got Richard, and then his sons, and then we might not have had all the other kerfuffle all the kind of things. So, so. Uh, yeah, so if you've got Clarence as king or his son through those two possible lines, you've got no princes in the tower, we've got no Richards, we've got no point. Henry Tudor's not going to come anywhere near this. Comp comp no, they, no and, and what they, we've got no boss, we've got no angry Ricardians. What they would have done, of oh, course, they would, they, would, they, would have, 
they would have pursued yeah. Henry, Henry, who becomes Henry VII to the death at that point, because he yeah. would have been he he would have been the last dregs. Yes. Of, or he would have been brought in in loyalty. It, yeah. And the thing is, if they'd been if they'd been a kind of loyalty of if if Margaret had approved um, Clarence as heir after the failure of the Lancastrian line, if that was the if that was the right way, then maybe we do see a Henry the Seventh in a position of kind of back at court. Maybe we do see we do see him potentially having those children. Uh, you know, there might not be a Tudor monarchy, but we perhaps have another great house. Maybe we talk about them the way we talk about the Howards. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I I think it, it's interesting. We see we see Clarence as the kingmaker for these two kings. We you know we see Henry the Sixth and we see Edward the Fourth, and we see him as this. Is he a backstabber? Is he proud? Is he arrogant? Was he very successful? All of these types of things. But actually, potentially, particularly in in, in my eyes, with 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 the the marrying of his. Um, his daughter to Clarence and all that, mm. you know, him drawing Clarence in and Clarence pulling away, but then all the secrets and documentation that went along with that alliance of Margaret of Anjou, all put together by Warwick. I think he really altered the course of the Wars of the Roses and the outcome, therefore, of that a lot more than we see on the surface and we give him credit for. I think he, yeah. he's always seen as a major player in the Wars of the Roses, but once he's dead, he's like, oh, well, he's dead. Do you know what I mean? And we move on. Well, he's dead. Next mm. thing, but actually, I think he reverberates all of the way through, well into the Tudor period, much, much more than he's given credit for, for want of a better expression. I think he's a much bigger influence in the outcome of the world. I think he yeah. took Clarence down, and that had an awful lot of implications for Definitely. what came next. Mm. So that's my Warwick. He's a bit less of a prick than I thought. Yeah, he is less of a prick than I thought, and, too. Um, yeah, really interesting. I would like to find out whether or not that document did yeah. actually exist and if it did who knew yeah. about it because obviously if henry the seventh knew about it that's another very good reason because that kid has potentially been named as a as, as an heir apparent it's been has been named as an heir yeah. apparent albeit by someone who shouldn't have done well by by the woman who technically would be argued was queen at the time was you know was an anointed queen and um did henry the eighth know about it could he have used that underneath to support his execution of the polls because there wasn't really another reason to do it was there well, apart from the Roman Catholic thing, apart from them being well, loyal, yeah, apart but, from, but you see, if Henry had known about it, I'm sure he'd have banged it out. I, I yeah. can't see him not doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wheezy Squeezebox. I enjoyed the White Queen series, then I read the books, but it's historical fiction, not history. I also enjoyed my... Yeah, I would say I, I really enjoyed though. the White yeah. Queen. Yeah, I did, but mm. just just don't enjoy it. Enjoy it, but remember the lady is... who played Jaquetta Woodville is. Bloody phenomenal! I know, I love her. Um, yes. and, and and is it Max Irons? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, he's he's a sort. Is. He is a sort. They made Isn't Richard he? quite dashing, didn't they? He well. is also a yeah. sort. Mm. There are some. There are some very, and in fact, Clarence. All three brothers fit. Yes. Well, the dude that played fit. Warwick Clarence. was the guy that was Cromwell in the Tudors. Yes, James Frame. Mm. Yeah. They used about they five, ten years yes. ago. You could Ooh. not watch a historical drama without James Frame being in it. My <laughs> husband started referring. My husband started referring to it being, else, My husband started saying that it was like there was fifty frames a second. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I want to revisit the White Queen fabulous. actually and just watch. Yeah, it for... I really enjoyed the White Queen. I didn't enjoy the portrayal of Margaret Beaufort, and I think I... a lot of the shit Margaret Beaufort gets now is literally. You see, people spout it, and it's word and that, for word, white queen. Yeah, I, I hate it if anyone ever. No says, people, so no. Said that so and so said to so and so. No, they, ha, were you there? Do you what know? You the second, I was there. I had a time machine. And I can tell you, they did not. No, say that. you are not. The allowed second to that any, the, the second that anybody starts starts saying, um, starts quoting people's words exactly. yeah. from the kind of from the fourteen hundreds, babe. <laughs> yeah. Nah, yeah. nah, babe. Nah, it's like speech marks. It's in fiction again, though. Yeah, yeah, I like the White Queen. Push it takes one on one of yeah. period dramas. Make sure your male leads are exceedingly handsome, regardless mm. of their actual historical appearance. Correct. Max, that is Max what I want. I reckon Max I want. is the best thing to happen to Edward the Fourth. Yeah. Like in terms of hot, his rep. Mm -hmm. Hot, hot to trot. Better, yes. better than the cartoon fox cat. Oh. I mean, there's first love, isn't there? Uh... <laughs> Truth. 
What can I say? Uh, I've had say? a number of people tell me about their Disney crushes since. Like, what the actual fuck is wrong with you people? Look. <laughs> I'm, you know I'm Disney princess dicks. I don't get it. Like, it's it's that's not what Disney's about. Jessica Rabbit for Blake. Yeah, at, least she's in, okay. at least she's human. <laughs> uh, I suppose she was, yeah. It's, it's a star, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I Disney is, film, there's God. loads of, like, hidden sex stuff in Disney. Loads. Mm. But I'm now thinking how old I was when I watched that. What Who was the film? Who film? Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Great film. Incredibly sexualised, actually, Jessica Rabbit, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Mm. What's the story? Philippa, uh, what's happening next week? Well. Mm. You did really well making I'm... it shorter this week, ladies. <laughs> Yeah, we stuck to time well, didn't we? We'll do better next time, <laughs> promise. Sorry, it's Liz. Warwick, yes, there's it was. so I'm, much I'm Warwick. That's around. the problem. There is so much Warwick. There's so much Warwick. And we well, still left loads out. We oh yeah, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Henry Pig loves to do a good shout. Uh, Mark yeah. Rylance is also good for a different reason. At captivating. Oh, on Mark, Mark, is Mark Rylance is. Mm. Uh, Mark Rylance is is as far as I'm concerned. I mean, uh, as far as I'm concerned, he is the finest actor mm. of. His generation, he is He's incredible, s- spectacular. Um, and oh, I had know he lost points for me when he was the voice of flopping Bing. I didn't, I didn't know that. I did have the privilege to watch him play Richard the Third, and he is just, <gasps> he's breathtaking. He's just oh my God. watching his Thomas Cromwell in Wolf Hall. The 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 way that that man can just what speak did he do recently? volumes oh. with his eyes. Mm. Like Super. he doesn't have to say a word. He can just look down the camera, and he can. The thing is, he can do menacing. He can do. He's just fucking phenomenal. Yeah, he, he was is. in a kind of almost comedy recently, wasn't he, with Jessica Lawrence, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, and. Oh God! Where they basically leave Earth. He? He, yeah, he plays this a, a bit Elon Musk type, I suppose. Like this, this, um, like wow, yeah. And it, so it's a completely different character yet again and again. Incredible. Um, yeah, he's just he's just a glorious. He's, he's just glorious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, on that, I suppose we should. Yeah. So next week, well, I don't know, what, ladies, whether we want to review what we're doing next week. It's O next week. Oh, yeah, I think maybe we do. I think we'll review yeah. who we've got Yeah, down. I don't think We'll let I'm... you all know uh, what we're doing next week. Yeah, yeah, O. Oh. Yeah, O. Oh, yeah. I just dude. remember oh. who it was. Yeah. Oh. I mean, yeah, no. We're gonna, so we're going we're gonna to reroute. We'll share it. We'll share it later. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, Philippa, tell us all the things you normally tell us about. Right. Well, you can support us and support our... Um, plan to torture Catherine in a Winnebago, make a drink tea and eat sausage rolls <laughs> at uh, www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash had podcast. Uh, yes. You can also um, sign up for free to our Substack, which is where we share links to these episodes and we're supposed to do other stuff, but we haven't actually got around to it. We will, it. we will at like some yet. stage. One day. So get yourself signed up so that you are ready. Um and that is because it's just about to scroll around. So I'll be able to pretend I know it. History after dark hub H U B at substack.com. That is us. History yes. after dark hub because it's going to be our hub at substack.com. So. And the email is where you send your past problems post bags because if I know you all love the Widow's Lancaster, we didn't have I one. know, I know you love it seeing is. us in our widow's veils. So if you want more, That's send us far. your props. They haven't got to be real problems. Make if you them want to up. See our props, get your props in. Yes, get oh. your props out for the lads. Props anyway. for props. Yeah, yeah. Say that props. when you're drunk. Okay. No. Never. Okay. No All right. So yes. So it's um, History After Dark 2021 at Google Mail. Oh, Gmail dot com. History After Dark 2021 at Google Mail. There you go. That's where you send your past problems post bags. Please, 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 please. Okay. Once again, thank you to everybody who has supported us on both platforms. Obviously, we are extremely excited about YouTube this week. Thank you very much indeed. You, if you only follow us on Instagram. Please, please, please do go down to YouTube. It's History After Dark. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell button, make lots of comments and share with everybody you like and everybody you don't like. We're not picky. No. Yeah. No. 
if you only follow us on YouTube, thank you again so, so much. We really appreciate all your support. If you do go to Instagram as well, if you do the Instagrams, it's history.after.dark. We get little bits of extra content there as well. And we also, you can follow our randomness. It's the only word for it on close friends. You can join our close friends and you can yeah. find out how to do Maybe that. a random one here. <laughs> <laughs> follow. Let's send each other things. What about friends. this? Yes. Yeah, um, no. then you could you code anything yet? <laughs> oh no, no, there was one. Obviously, I can't. I can't say what it was. No. Um, <laughs> clearly, no. I'll, I'll remind you afterwards. Remind me um, afterwards. Yeah. But um, yes, you can also join close friends, and you can join close friends by going down to the thing. I mean, buy me a coffee. Buy me a coffee. Yes, you can do that via there. And all of this is on our link tree, which is on Instagram. Is it on, on YouTube? As on YouTube well? as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. you can, oh, buy, you merch can buy merch. Well link for the merch oh, yes. is also there. So there we go. I think that is everything. So next week for the surprise O. Mm. Oh. Everyone loves a surprise oh. O. <laughs> they do. And it's always nice when it catch you by surprise, isn't it, ladies? Mm-hmm. When you least expect it, there it is. Oh, no, it could be. There must be times where it could be extremely inconvenient. True. For that place. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Shall I count us out then? Mwah. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a long time. Take care. I'm going to count us down. Three, two, one. Bye. Bye.